Hello and welcome to another in a series of technology-focused tips brought to you by the team at K2 Enterprises. Today's tip focuses on how to secure your Power BI dashboards. My name is Tommy Stevens. I'm one of the shareholders at K2 Enterprises. We thank you for stopping by. We hope that you find this information to be useful. You know, Power BI continues to grow in popularity, and personally, I think it is a phenomenal set of tools. But one of the areas where many people struggle with Power BI is failing to understand the security model that is available. And so what we want to do in this tip is step you through what that security model looks like. It is actually quite powerful, uh, and it is uh, simultaneously relatively easy to set up. Uh, what you're going to be able to do once we jump into this is create what is known as row-level security inside Power BI. Now, before we get started with that, it is important to understand that if you are working with Power BI Desktop and only Power BI Desktop, quite frankly, you really don't have many good security options, if any good security options, in Power BI Desktop. Rather, the ability to implement row-level security is only available if you're working with a Power BI service. That would be PowerBI.com, as some people refer to it. And, um, so, so it is really the, the cloud-based service where we can take advantage of row-level security. Interestingly, even though you cannot effectively really secure Power BI desktop reports, you will partially set up your row-level security in Power BI Desktop, and then you will complete the setup once you get up to PowerBI.com. One final note on at least attempting to secure a Power BI Desktop report. Perhaps the, the most effective way of doing that would be to take the PBIX file that Power BI Desktop creates and save that in a folder on your computer or on your server, as the case might be, that only you and other authorized users would have access to. You see, unlike an Excel file, for example, you can't put a password on a Power BI Desktop report and that really does then um, lead into this discussion of, okay, well, how can I keep uh, people who aren't supposed to access that data, how can I keep them from indeed accessing the data? As I said, in the absence of a password and Power BI Desktop does not support a password, probably the best option is just to store the PBIX file in a folder that you or other authorized users would have access to. Now, proceeding into the discussion of how do we secure the Power BI dashboards, not reports, but dashboards, understand that there are two levels of security here. The first one is one that you, frankly, really don't have a lot of control over. It's known as the web front-end cluster. And essentially, the web front-end cluster, this is all of the tools and all of the infrastructure that Microsoft has put in place to authenticate users when they sign in to the Power BI service, when they sign into their cloud-based version of Power BI. As I said, you really don't have any control over that other than the usernames, user IDs, and passwords that you select for yourself. So as, as long as you're doing a good job of, of creating sophisticated passwords, not sharing the passwords with other people, that's about all you can do on the web front end. Microsoft is taking care of everything else. Now, where you do have a significant amount of control is in what is known as the back end cluster. Again, that web front end cluster it just manages the initial connection and login to Power BI. As I said, at the end user level, there's very little to do here other than to make sure you keep a strong password in place. But when we consider the backend cluster, here is where we will enable row level security inside Power BI to control the data that each user can see. And this is done at a very granular detail if you want it at that level of detail. Importantly, as I said, this row-level security feature works only in the Power BI service. However, you do partially set it up in Power BI Desktop. Now, before we jump into demo mode, and I promise you this will be the last slide that we look at, the, the, uh, before we jump into demo mode, understand at a high level, and we'll demonstrate these, the five steps to setting up row-level security in Power BI. Step number one is to go into Power BI Desktop and set up the roles in Power BI Desktop for each of your user groups. 
That could be the accounting role, the finance role, the customer service role. Uh, however you want to set those roles up, that is completely up to you. Step number two, also in Power BI Desktop, is to create a DAX expression that filters the data for each role that you establish. And it is this DAX expression that's going to be the real heart and soul of row level security, as you will see. Thirdly, and also inside Power BI Desktop, you can validate that each role is working as it was intended. So you can kind of check your work and make sure that everything is happening as it's intended. Then for steps four and five, we will jump up to the Power BI service, uh, powerbi.com or Power BI Pro, if you want to call it that. And what we will do with steps four and step four and five, step four will add members to each role as appropriate. So setting up the role doesn't doesn't necessarily associate an individual with the role. We will associate the individual with the role inside the Power BI service. And then finally, we can test and validate each role in the Power BI service to ensure that it's working as intended. Enough of the slideshow, let's jump directly into Power BI and show you how to take advantage of this. Now, as you can see, I have toggled over into Power BI Desktop, and inside this instance of Power BI Desktop, I've got a moderately sophisticated data model in place. I believe this data model, let's just go verify it, uh, looks like about seven different tables, a little bit uh, ugly on the table design, on the, on the uh, schema, I should say, but nonetheless, uh, it, it will suffice for our purposes uh, in this demonstration. I also, as you can tell, already have a visualization created. There's no need to worry about multiple visualizations here. We'll just use this one as our example. And now I'm ready to begin creating and setting up the roles. So I will do this by going to the modeling tab of the ribbon inside Power BI Desktop. And on the modeling tab, I'm going to say that I want to manage roles. When I go into Manage Roles, this is where I will begin to create various user roles. You see, I already have a role in place for computers. Uh, maybe we're a retail organization, we've got different departmental managers, and I want my uh, the managers in the computer department to be able to see their data, but perhaps not see the data coming out of the cell phone department, for example. And so to that end, let's show you how you create a role. Obviously, with, that begins by clicking on Create. And I will call this one the cell phones role. And as part of creating the cell phone role, I will need to include a DAX expression that indicates that we want data filtered down to just cell phones. Now I happen to know that in this case, our product category table, this DEM product category table, would be the table where we will find the product category. I'm going to say that I want to add a filter, and I want to add a filter so that the product category name is going to be equal to, of course, cell phones. And I actually believe that that should be plural in this case, so let's drop the S on the end. Let's click the check mark here to verify that DAX expression. It's testing it out now. And then we will go ahead and click the Save button. So we have now gone in and saved that role. Now we can begin to see if our efforts are on track by choosing, for example, the View As dialog box. And notice that when we come in using this View As dialog box, I can say I want to view the data as, based on a role. If I clicked on the computer role, what, I'm, what I will be able to see upon clicking OK is I'm now viewing that report as if I had that role assigned to me. So I can see that the computer role clearly filtered down to computers. And similarly, if I, again, choose View As, and this time say that I want to take a look at what that data would look like if we're, uh, if we're a user to which the cell phone role has been assigned, I will click and now we can see that that data has filtered down to just cell phones. So it appears as if we're on the right track here, having gotten the roles established, having applied the filter, and now we've at least validated the role inside Power BI Desktop. 
At this point, we're ready to jump up to the Power BI service, and we're ready to add members to the roles inside the Power BI service, powerbi.com, Power BI Pro. It goes by many names, of course. So what I'm going to do now is take this data and I'm going to take this um, uh, th this example and say that I do indeed want to push this up to uh, the powerbi.com platform. I will choose publish and we'll go ahead and save this and now that data set and the visualization that we see on this desktop based report is being published. I'll publish that into my workspace And it says, I already have an example there with this name. Do I want to override it? Of course I do. So I'm just going to replace the previous example that I had up there. And now, obviously, that's being published up to PowerBI.com. Once that shows up in PowerBI.com, we'll jump up there and add the members to the role. Looks like we're published. So let's go ahead and say that we want to go and look at this information in PowerBI.com. As you can see, we're Moving into the PowerBI.com platform now, we'll let everything load appropriately. And there is the same tile that we were looking at back in Power BI Desktop just a few seconds ago. Now what I need to do is to look in my workspace, scroll down to my data sets, and in the data set, here is the data set that belongs to, if you will, it belongs to the tile that we're looking at on screen. So what I want to do is click on that data set and having selected the data set, I'll click on the ellipses just to the right and choose security. Now we can see the two roles that we've created. The computer's role, which was already there when I opened up the demo file for you a few moments ago, but we also, of course, have the cell phone's role. And we can see that there are zero users that are um, associated with each of these roles. What I will now do is go and take a demo account that I have, Katie Demo, and I will say that I want Katie Demo to be added to the cell phone role. Notice how the cell phone role is currently active. And so when I click add, that does indeed add Katie Demo to that role. And you can see that, Katie, uh, that, that we now have one user associated with the cell phone role. Now I could click on, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I could uh, jump over here and say that I want to also uh, click on the computer's role. Let's save that one. Click on the computer's role. And I could add Katie to this role also if I so desired. A single user can belong to multiple roles. And that's only um, common sense, right? Because you might have one team member performing uh, services in multiple departments, divisions, locations, profit centers, what have you. And so now you can see we actually have Katie added to both of those roles. We could go in now and click on the ellipses next to one of those roles and say, let's test as a role save our changes, and now as you can see, have, testing as a role, it's showing me only that information that KD Demo can see. Let me say that differently, only the information that someone to whom the computer role has been assigned. And if I want to check and verify that the cell phone role uh, is working appropriately, appropriately, I could do so right now, and we can see cell phones is working. And if I wanted to see those two together, then of course I could go in and see those together. I also could go in and say, let me go ahead and enter a single person, in this case, demo at k2e.com, and now we'll see what information that person has available to them. And of course, because we assign the cell phone role and the computer role both to KD Demo, then both cell phones and computers are visible. Now, as you can see, the process for setting up row-level security in Power BI is not as sophisticated, it's not a challenging process whatsoever. Five relatively simple steps, some of which you will perform in Power BI Desktop, some of which you will perform in the service. If you can execute those five steps, then you can create a very effective, very detailed, very granular security regime in your Power BI dashboards. I hope that you found this information to be useful. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, we thank you for stopping by. We hope that uh, you will come back and see us again real soon. Once again, thank you and have a great day.